Hi, I'm James McGuire here at AWS reInvent, and I'm talking with Chaz Clausen, VP of Security Strategy for Sumo Logic. Uh, Chaz, thanks for talking with us. And there's a lot going on at reInvent this year. I mean, I hope you're keeping up with all the buzz. Oh, it is hard to keep up. I was pleasantly surprised this morning they had the keynotes automatically showing in my room in oh. the hotel. So oh. <laughs> I've, I've caught up for today anyway. Good, good. Okay, you, you, you can't even avoid it, actually. You can't avoid it. Yeah. I didn't even turn the TV on. It was just in my face. It's so. just on, right. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. Uh, you know, I think that really, you can see the trend all over the show is, is agentic AI. And I think uh, what people are wondering is, where really is the return on investment for agentic AI? Is it, is it in troubleshooting? Is it in security response? I mean, where, where are people actually making money from agentic AI? Yeah, so I, I'll say this. Usually hype in the world of IT is overblown. Mm -hmm. In this case, I think, if anything, it's underplayed. Right. Um, and the age of agents, right, is fundamentally changing everything. And I think that from the top down and the bottom up, everyone sees the potential. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really interesting, too, is um, the bottleneck used to be really the intelligence of the frontier models. Like, were they smart enough that I could interact and trust? I think now we've moved beyond that. And it's really about how do we operationalize these intelligent agents hmm. at scale? Hmm. Um, because they're really, you know, for, in layman's terms, they're super geniuses in a bottle. Right. And how do you plug that in to your actual operational technology so that it can do things, it can act on your behalf, it can level up your efficiencies? Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is what everybody's talking here at AWS about, is we've got this power now, how do we leverage it? Right. right. So that's kind of, um, you know, where I'm, and, you know, I think fundamentally there's going to be applications that are not even yet imagined. Sure. Um, for Sumo Logic specifically, I guess I'll just say. Please. Um, we're seeing the most traction right now in security operations. Okay. Primarily because um, security data is text, right? And that's what the large language models are so good at being trained on large amounts of text and then being right. able to, to act on that, provide intelligence back in a conversational way, um, and log data specifically, right? We've got very, very complex stacks of tools, and each one of them is just a fire hose of, of exhaust, digital sure. exhaust. Right. So before, we would just take all that, collect it, and then have it available. You can search on it. You can do stuff on it. It's a very human intensive process, right? Sure. Now, all of a sudden, you've got this, again, this super genius agent that can now interface with all of that data, mm -hmm. changes everything. And mm. so instant gains of ask a question, get an intelligent response in ways just really unobtainable, you know, months, years ago. So That sounds pretty fascinating. I, I think the other question I'm hearing from executives and customers is, how can we trust agentic AI? Because these these bots are moving around the enterprise. They're they're doing work. They're doing important, really, really very important work. But how do we know they're making the right decisions? Because maybe they're making some upper level decisions. So how can we sleep at night knowing these these bots are running around our company? You know, it is it is a challenge, and I think that it's very unique because typically you have rigid IT systems that you can predict. And so you can programmatically put controls in place. Um, but this world of autonomous agents is completely foreign. Um, right. It's uncharted territory. It's new. Yeah, and you're really, it's almost like you're onboarding an employee that you don't trust until you've wrapped controls and you've got you know that zero trust model that we've proven on the human side mm -hmm. almost translates directly to the agent side. Like mm -hmm. we will give you keys to do this, but we need to monitor it. We'll let you do that, but we need to make sure we have observability, visibility around it. And so I think as you look at these agents as autonomous actors, um, it helps you apply best practices that fortunately we figured out um, years ago. We just have to apply it now to you know, non-human identities. So oh. it's or interesting. Does that mean some of the best practices that were applied to human security pros are now working on agents? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Huh, interesting. Well, let's talk about Sumo Logic and Agent AI specifically. So I know some companies are putting generative AI tools on top of observability platforms. I mean, mm -hmm. that's been done. But how does how is Sumo Logic different from that? Yeah, so we first announced what we call our Dojo AI about mm -hmm. 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. 
And it was really our first foray into, okay, we, we know there's potential here. Um, these, these agents are getting smarter every day. Um, but how does that translate to making our product better, therefore like making our customers um, you know, more satisfied and getting more intelligence out of Sumo? Mm -hmm. um, we first, you know, and I'll be completely honest because I think everyone was in the same boat where let's just bolt on an AI agent, right? Sure. And so our right. first go with that was a co-pilot and mm -hmm. everybody had a co-pilot mm -hmm. and you could, it was, it was cool in the sense that Previously, you had to know the Sumo Logic query language, uh -huh. and that takes skill. Well, what if I could just ask it a question and say, hey, show me all the failed logins on this service by this user over the last 24 hours, and it magically created the query for me. So uh -huh. that was cool, okay. but very limiting, right? Because sure. A, it, it didn't always get the query right, and it was kind of one-dimensional. And so we released that. We got it in the hands of our customers and really took a lot of feedback and and paused our you know oh. we we thought okay if we are if this is the future if as everyone claims it is maybe we need to slow down in order to speed up you got input from clients yeah clients uh, for sure okay. and it was a very interactive you know we like this we don't like this one of the biggest takeaways actually ties back to what you mentioned is can i trust it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. is there observability wrapped around it and how do you do you know, session isolation, session attribution, who's asking what questions mm -hmm. and writing one query, what queries. So ultimately what we did, we pumped the brakes a little bit and decided to first rebuild our entire platform ah, okay. with this new agentic framework approach. Which, which is Dojo AI. Which is Dojo AI. Okay. And so ultimately, as use cases come up, right, typically they're at the request of a customer um, and, you're familiar with Sumo, but I'll explain sure. it this way. Please. It's a massive like Swiss Army knife with more blades than you could probably pull out. Right. And so the problem is because it can do so much, the customers are often pulling out the wrong blade or they're doing the yes. wrong thing with it. Right. And so we're like, well, why don't we do an agentic framework hmm. where as the customers request use cases, hey, I need a blade that does this or a tool that does that, we can then assess, would an agent be appropriate here? Oh, okay. And if it would then we'll queue that up and we'll start to build this agentic wrapper around the core services that we already do in an unparalleled way, like security data lake at scale and the ability to search at scale, massive you know, terabytes of data. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the data. Now we're just starting to layer in the agents on top. And so we're, uh, well, you can probably sense it in my voice, but we're super pumped about yeah. once we've got the framework, the sky's the limit hmm. because agents are only going to get more intelligent. The customers are going to be requesting us to do more right. and we can just start to layer it in. And it's going to be more of a, maybe an intelligence fabric wrapped around the Sumo core services. Uh -huh. Well, all right. So now there's, there's a number of agents that can be plugged in. What might be some of the more optimal agents to plug in first? And it's probably, a, a, there's a menu there, I'm assuming. There is a menu and we actually, it was not easy to, you know, to do our roadmap and ex kind of predict as far out as we could responsibly, um, we started with the query agent, which was like version two of Copilot. Right. Much more intelligent. I can now ask a question conversationally. If it doesn't quite give me the query I want, I can then say, you know what, I'm really looking for it in a different visualization, maybe a different type of chart mm -hmm. or a different data source, right? So it's much like you would experience, you know, ch chat GPT or something. So okay. we improved that, the query agent. Um, then now we're starting to release in very advanced agentic features like our SOC analyst agent, our knowledge agent. Hmm. Um, and those, you know, if you had shown, I'm a former, you know, security practitioner. Right, I, I sense that. Yeah, yeah, I was on in the trenches, in the front lines. I worked for the NSA on their red team for a few oh. years. Had you given me this tool, you know, when I was doing that, right, I would have thought it's alien technology. Oh, really? It is mind blowing when you can literally ask a question. You get an alert with right. our SOC analyst agent. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. Help me investigate this. Oh. No context, no guidance. Just figure it and out. And it will say, one moment, please. You'll see the little spinner, and then it'll come back. Here's what I think is happening. Lay out as clear as you could possibly oh, do. Okay. Context, what this user did, why it has 
why it thinks the account was compromised, what's its hypothesis, all the way to showing you step by step every query to recommended remediation wow. steps. So it's a and whole new world, really. It is a whole new world, yeah. and it happens within minutes, huh. which normally would be like, okay, I've got an alert, let me go get my coffee, get comfortable, right. and I'm going to spend the next few hours writing queries and trying to build context. This is help me investigate this uh -huh. and just watch magic happen. Okay. So it is it is a game changer for sure. You know, I, I think I've heard from security experts, and correct me if I'm wrong, that one of the problems is there's such a blizzard of alerts. Some of them are wrong, some of them are right. Is that sort of what you're talking about? Or how, how yeah. does that factor in? Those problems are not yet solved, right? Okay. The alert fatigue. Is a big issue. It's yeah. a big issue. You're still getting inundated. You know, humans are the most valuable and scarce resource. Sure. You can't hire enough analysts, which is a challenge. Even when you hire enough analysts, then they have the next syndrome, which is swivel chair. You know, yes. they're going from tool to tool, right. and you know, and it's it's mentally draining. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're hoping now with these agentic intelligent agents that are essentially working on their behalf, it changes everything because mm. now they're going to do the initial triage. They're going to take care of any of that tier one context building. Right. Um, and the analyst is, you know, still involved. Um, that human in the loop, I think, is important sure. still because we're not at the point where we just, here's the keys to the kingdom and I'm going to Hawaii. Right. Um, but we're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, next year, if we do this again, I'll tell you like, <laughs> well, I gave it these keys, but I'm still holding on to this one. So, Human yeah. in the loop is important, mm -hmm. monitoring it. Hallucinations are not going away. Right. Um, but the fact that it can do what it can do mm -hmm. um, on behalf of that security analyst is mind-blowing. Yeah. I mean, it truly, and I, and I, I know maybe that's an overstated term, but it will, I mean, it's staggering. It's hmm. truly staggering. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, all right, let's look to the future because I think you know, companies want to know where are we going in the years ahead. So. You've talked about some of this. I mean, there, there's Agent Core Gateway. There, there's Agentic AI. There's Dojo AI. Are you imagining this is going to become an overall intelligence fra uh, fabric within Sumo, or that's not necessarily the direction you're going in? No, I think that accurately describes it. The world that I predict um, is everything is agent to agent, hmm. you know, and that might mean you have a personal agent, and this software has an agent, and right. you know, there's agents for everything. And they're all interacting and communicating on behalf of, you know, the human users. M my agent will call your agent. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And I'll only pick up if my agent tells me to pick up. Sure. So, um, but Sumo Logic wants to participate in that world. And we're in a good position to because we house a lot of the data. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're super excited about AWS here, this reInvent conference, is we're announcing our MCP server. Uh -huh. Which is essentially a front door into all of the agents that we build. Okay. So you have a question. If you have an, if we happen to have that answer, you just knock on the front door and the MCP server and our contextual routing built on a lot of these very bleeding edge AWS technologies mm -hmm. will be able to say, you know what? I think I've got an agent for you that's going to tell you exactly what you need. One moment hmm. comes back and then hands it off to you, to your agent, okay. which then does its thing, right? And so because Sumo Logic now has an official in, you know, in prototype or beta MCP server, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of participating in that new agent to agent world. Wow, is the MCP server I'm trying to imagine how the, the, the expert sees that. Is that a pain they look at or not necessarily? It's, it, most of it's done programmatically, okay. but because it's a, it's a standard, it's a protocol actually that was, um, it's brand new in fact. I mean, it was the end of last year that Anthropic oh. said, hey, we're, we see a problem here, which is this M to M scaling issue where there's too many agents and you've got spaghetti every trying to, this agent wants to talk to this API, uh, API right. and this server and, you know, there's too much authentication and it's just like a nightmare. They're like, what if we just release a protocol that simplifies it? And huh. that is the MCP yeah. paradigm. That's a big deal. Yeah. And so when you connect to an MCP, it's not through a UI, but it is like exposing you to what are my tools? Here are all the things that, I, that I'm good at or that I can answer. And if you ask me a question, then I will give it off. You can use one of my tools, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So think of it as a, 
very dynamic, fluid, like next gen API. Right. Because right? right. it abstracts away the complexity of trying to manage, you know, I'd connect to all these different systems differently, mm -hmm. put an MCP front door, and all of that complexity is gone. Yeah. Right? So, and that's, it's it's really because Anthropic was gracious and, and started it as an open source project, and then Google came over top with what they call their agent to agent protocol, A to A. Uh -huh. So A to A and MCP essentially are, are complementary um, and now Sumo Logic is like, this is perfect because all of the data that, you know, frankly, it's expensive to bring data into a data security data lake. Sure. Um, we love seeing customers get value out of it. Hmm. You paid to bring the data into us. Wouldn't it be great if I let you use the data however you want to do it? Sure. And this could be, you know, the game changer that we've been waiting for. Huh. Chez, I think you said it. A lot of good stuff. Fascinating, really. Um, Hopefully, I didn't say too much. No, I think I, I learned a ton. It's really interesting. So uh, I hope we get to speak again sometime. Yeah, I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Good.